Waking up in the morning is one of the toughest parts of the day. It always begins with an alarm clock screaming in our face. The room is as cold as the Arctic. Your arms shivering with goosebumps. And when you enter that hot shower, your skin scorches like it's touching the surface of the sun. But what makes it all worthwhile is that delicious, mouth-watering nectar we all can't wait for. A nice hot cup of coffee. It provides a jolt of energy and a unique high that very few things come close to. But for the instant satisfaction it provides, coffee can have serious, long-term negative impacts on your health. Tonight, I'm going to cover how coffee impacts your biological processes. What's in coffee? And then I'll cover how it affects your sleeping patterns, eventually resulting in insomnia. Now, it's no secret that coffee contains a drug known as caffeine. Caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant. That's a kind of drug with soul, whose sole purpose is to overclock your nervous system, both physically and mentally, beyond its normal operating mode. Now, I know a lot of foods and beverages have varying amounts of caffeine in them, so it's tough to avoid. But coffee is one of the most serious offenders of them all. I'm going to pass out a chart here. And on this chart, it has a ranking of different coffees, energy drinks, and sodas. One of the most interesting observations you can make about this chart is a very popular coffee. The Starbucks Tall Coffee it contains almost the same amount of milligrams of caffeine as a large energy drink. And sorry, there's not enough for everyone. The next size up, the grande size, is the most second popular drink ordered at Starbucks according to their 2017 sales stats. Right behind the mocha frappuccino. Coffee, a large amount of it, is caffeine. Caffeine makes you alert. Doctors classify it as an adenosine receptor antagonist. Denosine, or adenosine, is a chemical your body produces to promote sleepiness. Antagonist means that, it goes, that caffeine goes against this chemical. When you drink coffee, the caffeine in it takes effect almost immediately. After 30 minutes, caffeine has reached the peak of its performance. But the most interesting part is after that 30 minutes, it takes three to five hours for half of the drug to wear itself off. The most amazing part is to wear off the second half, it takes eight to 12 hours. So that innocent afternoon coffee you're having, that little pick-me-up to get you through the day, well, it's having an impact about 10 hours later when you're trying to go to bed at night. Our bodies run on a natural 24-hour process called the circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm regulates our bodily functions, blood pressure, energy restoration processes, commonly referred to as sleeping. The circadian rhythm has been found by the American Association for the Advancement of Science that caffeine has an effect on it, that it pushes it about 40 to 90 minutes off of its intended cycle. What happens over time from prolonged use of caffeine is it constantly pushes it further and further. And when you go further and further, your body demands more caffeine. And where are you gonna get it? You're gonna get it through the cheapest most convenient way to ingest it, coffee. From continuously drinking the caffeine, this effect compounds itself further and further. 
This is one of the most common causes of insomnia. For those that don't know, insomnia is a condition that makes it difficult to fall asleep or stay asleep. Insomnia itself can lead to depression, mental stability problems, headaches, fatigue, and low performance at work or school. You know, difficulty concentrating on almost everything. The demand, all these conditions creates a demand for more caffeine that again, you're gonna be drawn back to coffee to find. Over time, this creates even worse health issues and mental stability problems that lead you down further, darker roads you don't ever want to go down. Coffee is the forbidden drink in the Garden of Eden. It provides momentary satisfaction, but can ultimately hurt you in the long run. Tonight, we've covered what's in coffee, the caffeine infused with it. We've talked about the bodily processes it impacts, but maybe most significantly, the sleeping pattern and how it can ultimately lead to insomnia. So the next time you're going out for your afternoon coffee run with your coworkers, probably sometime between 1 and 3 p.m. tomorrow, think twice about what you order at the Starbucks. Is that momentary satisfaction really worth the slippery slope it's going to lead to? I hope you've learned a little something tonight, and you can change your lifestyle in a way for the better. Beat the craving. Go against the mainstream appeal for coffee. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Back to you, Toastmasters.